So, yeah, the iconic uh, opening lines of that song, I think everybody's <laughs> yeah. heard that, right? Um, right. And uh, sets that mood, sets that tone. And then we get kind of an expanded ensemble here where we get to have trombone and trumpet and bass solos and piano yeah, solos. Yeah, you know, when, when, when asked about, uh, in the early 60s, when Train was asked what his favorite album was that he made, he said Blue Train. Hmm. You know? And uh, it's not as standout from other records. Why, you know, why that one? He says, because the band is so good. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Lee Morgan, Philly. The whole band, the way they're operating as an ensemble is just great. You know, the way uh, Curtis Fuller kind of, you know, he probably could play more 16th notes if, if he wanted to, but it, he doesn't go for it. You know, he plays trombone stuff. That sounds great. Yeah. Uh, how about Kenny Drew? Kenny Drew, uh, uh, underappreciated Kenny Drew. That guy on that record, killing it. Now this is Bringing the, the pianist blues to we're it. talking like, about. The yeah, the pianist. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, the pianist. Yeah. Bringing the blues to the thing. You know, Every once in a while in, in his solo, he sneaks out some 16th note, excellent bebop, you know, perfect. But he doesn't play it very often. He mostly plays the blues and it make that's an important ingredient you know so the everybody's kind of playing their uh their part in making the session sound fantastic lee morgan's killing on the blues yeah the philly guy and i yeah, guess right? we'll be we'll be definitely talking about him in our future trumpet virtuoso uh absolutely yeah giant legendary yeah um yeah Great, great, great piece. Like you said, great ensemble. Um, again, beautiful, you know, dynamics with the band. and you know. Each. So there's a funny story, you know, in 1961, Train goes to Europe on his, one of his own tours, his, one of his own Europe tours, one of his first ones. And uh, uh, a, a French woman had transcribed his solo on Blue Train. And she came backstage and handed him her transcription of Blue Train and she asked him if he could play it and Train said no, no, I can't play that, it's too hard <laughs> <laughs> he can improvise like that but he can't like necessarily read that, you know what I mean yeah, yeah, that makes perfect and she, sense she was a little disappointed, you know and it, kind of, it, it sounds ironic to a person that like wait, you, you know, you, you can play it but you can't read it or I don't know what right and maybe he was being diplomatic and kind of not wanting to, like, okay, let's see if, you know, I can read this for you, what you wrote out of what I played. You know, yeah, the dog be, and pony show, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, maybe. But, but what he did do is he, he played the song live on both sets, and it's the only time he ever played that uh, Blue Train live. Huh. And so you get a couple of uh, later renditions of, of him playing it in 61. Uh, and uh, there's a couple of outtakes of Blue Train and Moments Notice from, from the album, so you get to hear uh, the guys going to work. Because if they did everything in one take that well, they'd be, it's like superhuman, right? Yeah. And so fortunately for us mere mortals, the other takes of Blue Train are good, but they're not that good. They're not as good as that one that's on the record. I, you know, the train solo on Blue Train, for me, that's a all 12 key so that you practice into the dirt for sure. That's one of the giants. Well, that's you know one of the ways you know to remarket uh, a lot of these albums, and also you know for for the legitimate uh, fans who want to hear those alternate takes oh, because yeah. you get to hear all these other ideas and how the piece is formed and all that. But absolutely, generally speaking, you, you go, yeah, the one that was on the record is the it was the good one. You yeah, know, yeah, it's, yeah. It's rare. Yeah, that you there's, go, there's there, what, what there's about use? ten. G- yeah, yeah. There's about ten uh, Giant Steps outtakes, you know, where you get to hear the band working on it, and there, there's Tunji outtakes where you get to hear them get the tempo right. It's a, you know, each take gets slower and slower until they get to the right slow tempo that's perfect to set Elvin Jones up. And and I have session reels for Kind of Blue. I have session reels for Milestones. For I mean, this is it's, as a mus- questing musician and recording person myself. This is great because you get to hear these guys working, you yeah. know, not just gods on the pedestal playing perfect every time. Right, right. Um, okay, well, we got our final tune uh, for part two here, 
and that is Moments Notice uh, from the same album. So theoretically, he wrote this at a moment's notice, like, hey, I got a recording session today. I should bring an original tune in. Yeah, I'll write one at a moment's notice. Ah. And, right? And so that's the lore behind it. It's, it's a, well, to, to get geeky with you, it's a contiguous two fives is what the nerds call it. So you have the, the melody note's the same. It's a concert G, and you change the two five under it uh, by half steps. And it's the second two five, F and B flat, F minor seven, B flat seven, to E flat, that's actually the key we're in. So the first one is like a 2-5 that's off by a half step, but the melody note still works really well when you keep the G over. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> and and just, to, just to quickly, um, you know, for our listeners that aren't uh, deep into the music theory, uh, um, just talk about that, that number system uh, briefly. Uh, you know, the 2-5 is, you know, there's eight notes in a scale. And then the chords are oh, based... Oh, well, no, 2-5-1 two, two, is a cadence. So yeah. the, the most famous cadence, the plagal cadence, would be 4-5-1. And Which is four, a lot five, of it's, pop and rock and folk and blues and bluegrass. Yes, They're all yes, based on 1-4-5 yeah, chord structures. But jazz right. began to put in the 2s and the 3s and the 6s well, to leading into those two, other tones. Yes, or, yes, or and the chords. 2 is a different version of the 4. So... Subdominant is four, dominant is five, and tonic is one. So the cadence is subdominant, dominant, tonic. So but what drives what what drives music in the Western world is dominant to tonic. Right. That's what drives the harmony functions in all Western music. And so but for in a, the key subdominant. Of, yeah. So if we're in the key of G, G is your one. Your two would be uh-huh. A minor. Um, jumping uh-huh. up to the four would be a D, right? No, no, oh, sorry, four C, would be C. And then C, the five yeah, would be the D. So when you D say seven, two, five, right. it's an, in the key of G, it's an A minor, D. Right. And then if you're seven. in, uh, yeah, a dominant chord, a D7. And so right. what he's doing is he's taking those that structure and kind of using them to... Was it? Would you call it chromatically uh, shift things? Or? Yeah, that's what. Yeah, yeah. Contiguous two fives are like the two five. The 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 first two five is off by a half step from the real two five, so they just kind of people people move the two fives around chromatically to add a little bit of excitement, so it's not as predictable. And then even with Coltrane, I mean, does it then kind of resolve back to? the the main key or the one like after- yeah yeah the, the tune is mostly a normal progression it's uh right. it's two five one for starters but it starts on this off by a half step two five and then two five one and then uh two five built off of the four minor and then he starts dancing around with contiguous two fives going to the uh flat seven so D flat, and then he does a two five to relative minor C minor, and then a two five to four flat seven, and then three six two five, and then he does a pedal point uh, over the five as the uh, back end of the tune that kind of sets you up for the next chorus, and then you go to the next chorus and it sets you up for these contiguous two fives, but it's mostly a uh, standard song structure. Okay. Well, uh, I'm going to listen here and see if I can hear that that uh, half step shift there <laughs> <Okay>. thing. <laughs> cool, you will. Yeah, yeah, you will. 